How's it going, everyone? Maryland here, and I'm on the Hermitcraft Feed the Beast server. The new one, that's right. This is the Unleashed server. We said farewell to the old Ultimate server that I've been doing for the past uh, past several months, and that other of the Hermitcrafters have been doing for even longer. But now we're all starting over on the Unleashed pack, which is based off of Minecraft 1.5, but it's, like, there's so many more improvements. Really, you can't compare vanilla Minecraft 1.5, or 1.6 even, to Feed the Beast 1.5, because it just adds so much to the game. Um, so, even though it's, like, a version behind vanilla, don't let that dissuade you, because there's so much awesome stuff in here, and it's going to be a lot of fun. Anyway, I got some bad news. I've just been struggling to figure out what on earth to do because I derped. I derped, I tell you, straight up derped. For some reason, I could not find my video footage of my very first, uh, very first introduction into this new server. Yeah, yeah, that was such a shame. And, you know, all the stuff I did, my first impressions, all that jazz, punching down a tree... Yeah, all gone. I don't know what happened. But I just took it as a sign. I mean, who wants to see me punch a tree anyway? We've got so much more stuff to do. Because, you know, I've already done that before. So, I, rather than let it discourage me, I decided, you know what, that's fine. I'll just go ahead and build some stuff, and then we can work on some of the new stuff together. So, where am I at right now? I'm a little farther away from spawn. Spawn is somewhere like over there, but there's nothing really too exciting there at the moment. There's a rubber tree farm. People are setting up their bases, but it's just kind of, you know, kind of chill right now. We're all getting started. Um, so I started building this little hut thing out of this stuff called quarried block. You get quarried block by smelting this quarried stone stuff but you can find all over the place. Now this is a very small house. I didn't have much material to work with, but I did go ahead and mine a whole ton more, uh, which is kind of nice. So hopefully I'll get to building that at some point, but that's just one of the things I have planned for the next few episodes of Feed the Beast Unleashed. I like that it rhymes, by the way. Um, yeah, so first things first. Let's address some of the uh, some of the changes. The minimap. Now you control that with the equals key. That brings up the minimap options. It used to be M would do that. Well, not anymore. You can change it back by going to controls here. But these are the new controls. So yeah, to zoom, it's the backslash. Yeah, all this stuff here. Um, all right. So that's useful. Another thing is it defaults to the square map, which it's kind of okay. It doesn't spin the map around with you, though. So sometimes it gives you a better idea of where north is and where west is and all that. I don't like it as much, to be honest. I prefer the rounded map here, which will basically leave you in the center of the map and always pointing in the direction you're facing. I like that for whatever reason, but it's a valid option, I guess waypoints just press the minus key by default and that'll show you that um let's see what else okay so if you were paying attention you noticed there was a duck on my head <laughs> if you notice that congratulations you win 10 points 10 internet points that's a lot of internet points not really and internet points are a fake thing but anyway so how on earth do you use these hats and where do you get these hats this is from this thing called the hat mod, which, uh, it, let's see, how to describe it. When you download Feed the Beast Unleashed, when you download that mod pack, there are some mods that are disabled. You'll actually need to go in to uh, edit mod pack from the launcher, and you'll need to add those mods to the enabled list. You need to manually enable them. If you do that, then you'll have access to that stuff. We're playing with all of the mods, all the optional mods enabled, except for vending, which was causing us some problems. Oh, this is my little cave house, yo. Uh, you know, I got some stuff. I know, I already got some diamonds and some things. I will be sure to show you a lot of this 
such as these forest gems to get started in dark craft. And I got a whole ton of clay that I'm hoping to tackle um, another new mod called Tinker's Construct, which lets you build your own tools. And dark craft lets you build a whole ton of interesting things. But it's pretty overpowered. Both are actually fairly overpowered, too. And I got these berries that uh, you can just pick. I picked them right over there in that little bush there. And they only heal half a hunger bar, but you can eat them pretty quick. They regrow fast, and they're relatively saturating, which is nice. Okay, so about those mods. Another one that you may notice, just based on our surroundings here, we have this mod called Biomes of Plenty Enabled. And Biomes of Plenty is essentially a mod that changes the biome generation to create some really cool looking biomes like you can see a cherry tree over there it's not a cherry it's a, a oh, what is it the cherry blossom yeah i think that's it and we're in like a mushroom forest biome there's a whole ton of biomes really cool looking ones in order to have that going though you need to enable it from the uh edit mod pack thing on the launcher and then you also, when you're creating a new world, you also need to select from, you know, the world type. You know, where it says, like, um, what is it, uh, super flat or large biomes. If you have biomes of plenty enabled in the edit mod pack thing, then you can add it when you're creating new world. You just have to select the mod or the, the world type for that to biomes of plenty. And you'll get some pretty looking biomes. Okay, so that being said, this is kind of what I got going on right now. I have this grindstone thing, which I know I talked about in the last series as a great way to start doubling your ores. In order to make that, you don't need too much. Um, you need three smooth stone, three certus quartz dust, which is basically like the old quartz dust, except you can also use nether quartz dust if you'd like as well. That's why they changed it, because uh, Nether Quartz wasn't around until 1.5, which we are now on. And then you need two cobblestone and the wood gear. That gets you a grindstone. In addition to the grindstone, you need something called the wooden crank. And that's super simple. It's just five sticks in, like, this pattern. And that gets you the wooden crank, which you can right-click, and that puts it on top. As for this thing, this basically gives you the funnest minigame in the world... Actually, let me do some gold. You can put up to three things in there, and then you just hold in, right-click, and it will grind it. Slowly, but surely. Isn't this fun? It's so exciting! <laughs> I know, it gives you pulverized gold, or pulverized whatever you're trying to make. Which, you know, it's kind of nice. The downside is you have to stay here and right click but the plus side is it doesn't require any power and it's really cheap to build as long as you can find some quartz early on so if you're able to do that this is definitely a great way to get started for your ore doubling otherwise another fairly effective way is you can make this thing called a slag furnace which is basically just two furnaces with uh, six cobblestone on the side. So it's like, what, 22 cobblestone or something? Eight and 16. So yeah, 22 cobblestone. And with this, you put in, you know, coal or whatever you want to burn it with like normal. And then you put the ore on top. And it will basically give you additional output for that ore. It doesn't cook everything, but it does do a pretty good job. It gets you smooth stone. Which is kind of nice. It's not a 100% of the time thing, but it does happen. And most of the ores that you can put in there, it has like a 120% chance of having. So every now and then, you'll end up with an extra ore, which is pretty, or an extra ingot. I'm sorry, an extra ingot, which is pretty cool, actually. So, yeah, um, that's also a nice option if you don't have access to this and you want to just do some basic ore doubling. Ideally, like I showed in my uh, previous video series, you want to have the pulverizer going right away. But that requires some power, and it requires a few different things. So, anyway, that being said, let's see. What other kind of fun stuff? I know, I got those diamonds. I made a diamond pick, enchanted it with a level 30, got silk touch, 
on the first try, but nothing else. So it's sort of a, it's an all right win. All right win. So I think it's dark out. I've been doing a good job at lighting everything up, though. So hopefully, I mean, it's not perfect. As you can see, see all these uh, yellow X's? Those are what happen when you press F7. And I know I showed that in a previous episode, but they always would show up as, I think, red X's in the original. Well, not the original, but in Feed the Beast Ultimate. Well, they're yellow X's if it is only when it's dark out. So let's say it's daytime out. Nothing will spawn here. If you see red X's, though, that means, you know, the sunlight isn't touching it and you need to put a torch there. Otherwise, something will spawn no matter what, whether it's day or night. So that's kind of nice. I'm going to turn that off for now. I forgot I had it on. All right. So you know what? I have done so much talking. Uh, there's not all that much to show you over at spawn, like in the one. So I think I'll just leave that be for now. But I think we should start making some kind of power supply. I've got a whole ton of oak wood here, so I think I should burn some of that to make some charcoal. And then I think I should start making like, I don't know, maybe a, I don't know, like an engine of some sort. Basic engine. That'd be pretty good. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and get these cooking and I will then see ya in a sec. Okay, so went ahead, did a little bit of grindstone stuff, smelted some things up, and uh, yeah, now I'm going to try something interesting out. This is a new early game engine you can make. It's called the Clockwork Engine, and I think it's relatively simple. You need a piston, some glass, some wood. And then a clock and a copper gear. All right, so not too bad. You're going to need, like, some gold for the clock, some iron for the piston, um, and some copper for the copper gear. But that gets you this clockwork engine. Now, I think this is relatively similar to this grindstone, where you actually have to right-click things in order to power them. So I'm just going to set it up right here just for now. Um, you know, this is not its permanent place, but I want to test it out. I actually have not played with it yet, so set that there. And I made a powered furnace, too. So let's see if this uh, does anything. Now, apparently, oh, there you go. So you right-click it, and that kind of... The heck was that? <laughs> well, I don't have any engines or anything going, so that's kind of weird. What is going on? I don't know what. Someone's blowing something up. I see someone was flying around over there. But uh, that sounded more like an engine or something blowing up. Ooh. <laughs> I hate that sound, I tell you. The heck? Oh. Maybe they're shooting explosives or something. I did see something going around. Yeah, it looks like they're, I don't know, playing with <laughs> gravity guns or something. <laughs> oh, they're crazy. Oh my goodness, what the heck? They're throwing zombies at me. <laughs> oh, shoot. Ah. <laughs> okay, that's that's pretty funny. Nice. Except I feel like my place is being raided. These guys look like they're, I don't know, the men in black or something. <laughs> like, I don't even know. <laughs> oh, man. Wow, that's fun. I'll have to make one of those sometime. Here, I was just playing around with the gravity engine. Ooh. No! Woo! Oh my goodness. <laughs> wow, that was a flight. First class ticket. Okay, now I gotta go swim all the way. Oh no! Uh, oh jeez. I'm getting destroyed. 
<laughs> Spooning on the host. Those crazy guys. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's something. What the heck? Where are these carrots coming from? I'm never going to understand. <laughs> carrots and string? You're trying to tell me something? What? What is... What is this? Can I wear this? Yay! <laughs> I now have a lovely flower band. <laughs> it looks dashing. <laughs> oh, that's pretty great. <laughs> Okay, I should probably get back to work before these two decide to destroy the whole world. <laughs> and I have some carrots, which is good. Okay, so back to that clockwork engine. Let's see. Now they were playing with some dark craft armor, which is kind of neat. Uh, wow, this thing is still actually going. I mean, it's not making much, but it's making a little bit. So if I right-click it repeatedly, it charges it. And actually, it charged pretty fast. Now, you don't want to get it up to red like that. Once it's at the red, I hear you need to stop. Otherwise, you'll damage yourself. So well, that's going pretty good, actually. I don't know how long it's going to stay there, but the nice thing with this setup right here is it will require absolutely no uh, charcoal or anything. So I can go ahead and smelt whatever I want, just like clockwork. Okay, so speaking of which, I should probably go ahead and smelt up, I don't know, something. And I should probably make a pulverizer for this too. That's actually doing a pretty good job, I gotta say. I was thinking it wouldn't be all that great, but that's pretty nice. Pretty darn nice. So I want to get some of this rubber cooking, actually. So let's put that in there. And as we can see, I think it only outputs a maximum of 1.5 MJ per tick or something. Let's wind it up a little bit. There we go. Hmm. Huh. Nice. And it does a pretty decent job, too. Well, very cool then. Very cool. Now we're getting some rubber bars, which is great. Now, I want to make a tree farm so then I can get some unlimited charcoal and stuff. So that's definitely something that needs to happen. And I think rather than going with my Steve's cart setup that I used previously, I also just have to say I love this with the duck on my head. <laughs> the flower hat with the, the duck. Oh, I can't see. Darn it. All right, let me go over here. Oh, I guess I just don't have... There we go. Let's see. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it's perfect. It's perfect. Okay, so, um, yes, let's see. Um, I want to have one of the Mine Factory Reloaded Tree Farms because I can keep it relatively condensed, and it's uh, a much better option, really. So I'll just have that going, making a whole ton of charcoal, making a whole ton of... Well, wood and stuff, too. So that'll be my early game power supply. But this is working quite well currently. Hmm, nice. Okay, so I went ahead and I moved a bunch of the... Well, actually, just the clockwork stuff upstairs so I could start smelting some... Um, oh, what do you call it? The, the quarried stone. To make the quarried blocks. But I want to also get to work on making a Tinker's Construct setup. Now, to do this, you're going to need three components. You're going to need sand, you're going to need gravel, and you're going to need clay. So I'm going to take a stack of each and then combine them together. And that'll give you two grout for every, uh, every one piece of each of those you put in. So a stack of each will get you two stacks of grout, which is fine. Now, what do you do with this grout, huh? 
Well, you have to cook it, and then that'll make something called seared bricks. Now, I know I have that powered furnace upstairs, the clockwork engine, but I just don't want to have to deal with it right now. Let's just do it this way. I do have plenty of charcoal, so it's not a problem. Okay, so this is going to cook into the stuff called seared bricks. Now, when you start the game, you'll actually have this materials and you booklet, which you can read through. And in short, you basically need to make a few things. There's a whole bunch of stuff to Tinker's Construct here. This has the recipes for a lot of the basic things, but I don't know. I wouldn't worry too much about it. So um, the thing you need to do first is make this grout stuff and then the seared bricks, which you can use to make seared bricks, seared bricks, which are necessary. Smeltery controllers, which are very necessary. You only need one, but they're very important. And uh, yeah, that's actually all it shows for now. But that's fine. That's fine. Um, so we're making some of those. I think I'm going to let those cook briefly here. And then that should actually give me enough to make a basic setup. You're also going to want to make sure you have a bucket of lava because you need to feed this thing some lava. So that's why I have said bucket. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to take that with me, and I'm going to wait for this stuff to finish cooking. I will see you in a moment. Okay, so I've gone ahead and got my seared bricks. Let's go ahead and make some stuff with them. What do you say? So I think I'm going to build this upstairs, even though I think it's still... Oh, I guess it's light out now. That's nice. This thing is actually going slower than I thought it would, but that's fine. It's fine. It's still free. Oh, actually, it's all finished up now. Huh. Okay, well, that's actually fine. You know what? I want to cook these rubber bars really quick because I need to get some plastic, but I'm going to be doing that later uh, for my tree farm. Okay, so, so let's go ahead and make this smeltery thing. What do you say? In order to do this... You're going to need a few things here, and you're going to need these seared bricks in order to make them. So your basic thing is this seared bricks. It takes four seared bricks, brick as in a singular brick, and that makes seared bricks, as in plural. Um, then you're also going to want do, 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 something like a, basically like a chest made out of seared bricks. That gets you the smeltery controller. So you need one of these for sure. And as soon as you make that, you'll get a book in your inventory called Mighty Smelting. Well, that's mighty interesting. Um, you also are going to need... Oh, what is it? Uh, something or no, Actually, wait, was that it? This is a smeltery drain. I think you use that with pipes. Let's just see. Smeltery controller, drain... Uh, I don't remember. What was the other thing I need? Yeah, you know what? Let me just take a look here. I think it's even in this book. Tool Forge. Smell 3 controller. I need to make that darn tank. So let's go ahead and do this. I just don't remember exactly what it was. I was just looking at it. Okay, actually, this explains how you want it to look. In this instance, as you can see in the picture here, you need like a kind of a three by three on the floor there. And then you also need blocks surrounding it. It doesn't have to surround the corners, but it does need to kind of encase it there. So that's kind of nice. And we need to make that tank thing. Um, so we're going to need, oh, there it is. Oh, that's pretty simple. Seared window, seared faucet. Yeah, we're going to need faucets. Windows are kind of nice. They're not necessary. And then you need the casting table. Okay, so you can read through the book. It's pretty helpful, but it is not necessary. So what is necessary, though, is making the controller, the tank, and then I think, yeah, actually, I think you do need a drain. I think that has to be hooked up to a faucet, I think. Yeah, so let's go ahead and make one of these. Okay, so we have actually a pretty good amount of these going on right now. So let's go ahead and make, let's see, nine on the bottom, and then, 
three, six, like 12 more. So we're definitely going to need 16 here. Let's set it up, probably a bad spot for it, but I'm going to raise it up one level. Just so it'll be off the ground. Actually, wait. Yeah, yeah, let's do that. Okay, so. Oh, darn it. All right, there we go. Okay, so. Oh, wait. No, actually, come to think about it. This is going to be the floor, okay? I'm trying to think because I'm going to be building a base here, and I don't want to have to just tear it all down. So I think I'll be able to build around it regardless. So first things first, go ahead and find where you want to put it. In this instance, I want to put it here. And then take a 9x9 nine nine of these seared bricks, like this, okay? Now around it, doesn't matter what you have, this is the floor. So it's not really a big deal. Then, on this layer, you need to put all of your different stuff. So, for instance, if we wanted the smeltery controller, that's where you handle all the main stuff, we could put that there, and then we could put, say, the tank right there. Then, let's go ahead and put this smeltery drain there, and you need to hook up a faucet to that drain, and that's where things will actually pour out of. Okay, great. So that gives us a basic thing. Now, let's just wrap this all around. And as you can see, we're going to need to make two more of these. So let's just go ahead and do that. Also, in 1.5, you can just hold in, like, right-click, and that drops a single item there. Also, you can hold in left-click to evenly distribute them. But I don't want to make any more of those right now. So we got the seared bricks. Let's go ahead and place those there. Now, this is, I think, technically a uh, smelter. Yeah, see, it's even kind of going. Um, but we're going to need to power it. And in order to do that, we need lava. So find someone with lava, and then dump a bucket of lava into this seared tank. You right-click it, and it'll fill it up a little bit. And you can even see it shows some fuel there. So that's nice. Now, how on earth do you... Whoa, my goodness. How on earth do you do anything with this? Well, it's actually simpler than it may seem. We're going to need some kind of ore... Which, I'm going to have to go downstairs to get, darn it. Um, oh, whoops. Well, that was a derp. Here, let me just get this thing cranked on. Now, this can actually effectively replace the um, pulverizer or the grindstone because it does double your ores. The only thing is you just need to keep feeding it lava. So, if that's not an issue to you... Um, and it's really great, but if you're going to be doing a ton of stuff, you are going to need a supply of lava going on. So let's go ahead and actually start with some gold. Gold is a very useful thing to start with because that's what you'll use in order to make casts of things. And I guess while I'm down here, you know what, why limit myself to gold? Iron would be a good thing to get. You can definitely smelt that down. Um... Let's see, iron, there's, uh, aluminum is actually very useful, and you never want to grind that up. You always want to smelt it in the smeltery, because it gives you so much more for your stuff, which is just great. Just take my word for that. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and try this out. What do you say? Okay, so over here... What you can do is you can take your ore, for instance, and you can just put it right into those slots there. And then there's this little bar there that shows up as it's cooking. And once it's complete, it will then be liquefied into this smeltery. Okay, it'll be liquid. Um, molten gold, which is kind of nice. And then you can dispense it by using this seared faucet. Now, in order to dispense it, you're going to need um, a casting table, which you can make fairly simply. You need, uh, actually, it's this page. Just seven of those, and that'll make a casting table. Or you can do sort of like a cauldron-looking thing, and that'll make a casting basin, which is useful for getting whole blocks out of something, which is actually pretty nice. Um, that's why I oftentimes like to have two faucets or two drains, 
Uh, just because. But the only one you really need is the, um, the casting table. And that's this thing right here. So as long as you have all this stuff, any extra... Um, actually, I can put it there. It needs to be right under it, I think. Actually, I don't know if it could... Let me just see really quick. Might be able to pour down underneath a bit further. I think it has to be directly beneath, but I'm not sure. Okay, so as you can see in here, it says molten gold, ingots 18. That means there's 18 ingots worth of gold in here. And that's pretty cool. I put in nine, so this does effectively both double and smelt my gold, or whatever you put in there. Um, yeah, it looks like it does have to be directly above. Or directly below, I'm sorry. Well, this table needs to be directly below. That needs to be directly above. Okay, so on this, if I were to just pour this out right now, it would just give me kind of like a gold plate. You need to actually make a um, an ingot thing first. You have to have an ingot cast. And I think we can do this by taking something that looks like an ingot and placing it there. Now this is why I really recommend starting with gold, okay? Because gold and um, brass aluminum are the only things that can make a cast. And casting stuff is very important if you want to make the good tools. So we went ahead and we cooked up some of that. Now we have a brick there, which looks like an ingot. If we right click it with the brick there, it then gives us an ingot cast. Now it did end up using two of our gold ingots, which is somewhat of a shame, but it's not that big of a deal. Now when we place this, we can right click it and place it on the casting table. And then when you right click it, it will produce gold ingots because you made the ingot cast. See how that kind of works? You make a cast for something that you want. Now, how on earth are we going to make tools out of that? That's where the magic of Tinker's Construct comes into play here. Um, we're going to need to make, um, I think it's actually in the other book here. Yes, it is. So we're going to need to make some, oh, what is it? The stencil tables and blank patterns. And you're going to want to have some stone. So pretty straightforward to make a stencil table and a pattern chest is also pretty handy to have so let's go ahead and just make some of these oops basic things um got plenty of wood here okay so what was it for oh actually i'm doing this all wrong i need the sticks there we go all right definitely going to need some sticks here so for a blank pattern it's just kind of a thing like that and then with this, I think you just put it on that, and that gets you a stencil table. And as soon as you make that, you're going to get um, materials and you. A different book, huh? Is that the same thing? I think it might be. Oh, well. Okay, so I'm eventually going to want to move this, but right now it doesn't matter. So you go in here, and this doesn't tell you anything, does it? No, it doesn't. That's because you need to craft another blank pattern. And then with the stencil table, you put that there, and then you click Next Pattern. And this will, uh, it'll craft then this blank pattern into whatever pattern you choose here. So let's say we wanted to make a pickaxe, right? First of all, to make a pickaxe, you're going to need three things. You're going to need a tool rod. So let's make one of those you're going to need to make a handle or a binding or something like that and you're going to need to make the pickaxe head. So with the stencil table let's go ahead and make that pickaxe head with one of those and then let's do this next pattern thing until we find not the wide guard, hand guard, those are for like swords and things. You want this tool binding pattern. So you have these things, right? Cool. Oh, did I just see a spider? No, I think I'm good. All those spiders you're hearing, by the way, this was such an unfortunate start. I, <laughs> I wish I would have had my part one footage, okay? Because the first night, I dug down here, right? And seriously, right where that dirt is, 
right on the block beside it, that is where a, a cave spider spawner is. And I ran into that, and I had like half a heart my first night. It was pretty terrible. It was pretty terrible. Okay, so we have these tool things from the stencil table. You use these in order to make the stencils. Now, you might be thinking, oh, sweet, can I go ahead and put that in the casting table? And No, it doesn't work that way, at least not if you're using these wooden patterns, okay? The patterns there are just for making um, stencils, essentially. What you're going to want to do if you want to make the um, any of the iron or the metal kinds of stuff that requires smelting you're going to need to make that other thing. So let me just take a look at this really quick. Oh, actually, this is really nice. That red book, this is volume two. And this shows you the different things you need in order to craft the different tools, which is very nice. There's a variety of weapons. There's a variety of tools. There's also the uh, second level tools, which you'll need something else in order to make. So if you're thinking, oh, I can just make whatever, no. You need to make this thing called a tool forge. I think it's in that first book. You can't just make them on a standard thing. I mean, you make the casting and stuff. Uh, you know what? You'll see in a moment. Here, let me find that first book here. Stencil table. We just made that. We need the part crafter. Or no, the tool station. Or maybe it is the part crafter. So that's a log and a pattern. Pattern chests are handy, too, because they'll store your patterns. Oops, sorry about that. This tool forge. Okay, so there's the tool station, and that only makes the tier one tools. The tool forge lets you put together the tier two tools, and it's a lot more expensive. You don't need this to get started with tools, but you do need it for those advanced tools I showed you that require the higher materials. So start with the tool station. It's just a crafting table and a blank pattern. So let's go ahead and make that crafting table. And let's go ahead and make that blank pattern. What do you say? So, boom, boom. Doo, doo, doo. Okay, pattern, crafting table, tool station, we're set. Nice. Now we can set this. Let's just set it here for right now. Okay, so this is how you actually make the tools. But we don't really have the parts to make those tools just yet. This is what we'll use that gold, for instance, for. I mean, if we wanted to make a gold tool. Realistically, with that gold, I'm going to make stencils first, or uh, the, the casts first, in order to make the tools. Hopefully, you're still with me on this. Um, okay, so we need the tool station. And it does turn out we need, what was the other thing? The part crafter thing? It's just that and that. I th no, that and a blank pattern. That's right. Okay, we need the part builder. So let's set that there. And what this part builder does, this is why you need these patterns, okay? So for instance, let's take our tool rod pattern and put it there. And then we can take a material to make that tool out of. And gosh darn it, do I not have any cobblestone on me? That's so weird. Oh my goodness. Where is all my cobblestone, bro? Well, I'm just going to take some from here for right now. It's not that big of a deal. Okay, so in order to make the things, the casts like this, to make the better tools, you need the gold and the smelter, and then you need to build the parts here. So you put the tool rod pattern up there, and then the material here, and this will give you, in this case, a stone rod as well as a stone shard, because this only takes half a material. So this shard makes essentially the other half, and I think I could use that to make the tool binding. We'll see in a moment. So with the pattern there, just the wooden pattern, we can make the stone rod and get the stone shard left over. So let's put that there, and now let's take this tool binding pattern. See, we can now make a stone binding. Very cool, right? Well, what are we going to need to do now with all that? That is a very good question. I'm going to make a chest really quick here. Just because. Um, let's get rid of that. Okay, so. Just let me dump some of this stuff off. Jeez. All right. We can make a tool pattern thingy. Where did I throw that cobblestone? We're still going to need some. 
Okay, so we have the stone binding, the stone rod, and we just need the pickaxe head, which I put in here. And I got the, the cobblestone. So let's put that there. Let's put one of those there. It only takes one of the material, so we don't get any shards left over. And that gives us the stone pickaxe head. Cool. Now, if we just wanted to make a stone tool, we could do it just by going to this tool station. And it lets you put together any of these parts. So I can do all this, and I get a stone-bound pickaxe. The nice thing with this is it will never break break. I mean, it'll run out of juice, and you can't do anything more with it. But you can actually repair it by going back to a tool station and giving it more cobblestone or whatever its material is. But this isn't what we want to do right now. We want to take these bindings and the stone rod and all the, the stuff we just made, and we want to make casts out of it by using the gold that we smelted earlier that's just chilling inside of there. So let's go ahead and take the stone binding, place it there, just like we did for the ingot cast, and then right-click. And just like that, we will receive the tool binding cast, which is very helpful. And that will let us make um, sort of the molten stuff into a hardened material. So we can make gold tool binding. We can make iron tool binding, you know, pretty much whatever we would need. We can now make it because we have the cast for it. Similarly, let's do this for the pickaxe head here. And that'll get us the pickaxe head cast. You can't just put the binding pattern there. You have to make a tool first by using the stencil table to make the stencil for the tool, and then the part builder to take that stencil and, yeah, make it into the, the part you need. And then you put the part onto the casting table there. That's something that does tend to confuse a lot of people. They think, oh, I can just make a stencil and pour liquid whatever on it. No, it doesn't quite work like that. It really doesn't. So we have nine ingots left of molten gold. You know what we can actually do? Let's go ahead and make a smeltery drain here. Or not a drain. Um, What is it? The smelting basin? Th I don't remember what it is. But you can basically make blocks now by making one of these. A casting basin. That's right. So let's take down this table because I'm too lazy to make another drain and controller. And I don't think I actually even have the bricks for it. So instead, we can use this casting basin. And what that'll do is that'll actually take nine ingots worth of whatever molten material you have in here. And that will pour it out as a block. That's really helpful because you have to burn through all of your materials. It like kind of stacks up here. So if I wanted to cook some iron right now it would overlay the gold, and I wouldn't be able to do that. I would need to empty it kind of first. You can combine materials, certain materials, like to get alumite, or um, I don't know what the other one is, but yeah. Um, yeah, definitely, definitely keep in mind the usefulness of a casting basin, because it lets you get a gold block if you put in gold, lets you get a block of a thing rather than getting ingot after ingot after ingot, which just takes forever. It takes so long. So we don't need any of these parts anymore because now we'll be able to craft our own, which is great. Um, there are a few different things we can actually do here. There's a different variety of materials. So let's check out this metal smelting book thing. This shows us all the stuff we just kind of saw. Um, oh, no, actually, that's not the one I want. Darn it, where is the one? I guess it's this materials in you. This shows the different materials after all the different tools. So for instance, um, this is a great reference to look through, by the way, because it tells you different stats on the tools and different things like that. Uh, iron, flint, yeah, you can make stuff out of flint, out of cacti, obsidian, bone, alamite, which is interesting. It's pretty effective, actually, but it requires um, several things in order to make. Cobalt and ardite you can only get in the nether, and they can be smelted together to make the manuin. Ma manuin, ma man I don't even know. Um, copper, bronze, steel, 
you can make quite a few things. And then you can also attach things to your tools to improve their stats, which um, I think I'll, I think I can probably show you that. I'll have to see. But first and foremost, let's just make a basic iron tool. The nice thing about this iron tool is it won't break so easily. I mean, it'll just be better off than, say, this iron pickaxe right here, which is a good thing. Definitely a good thing. So let's take this iron ore. Oh, we could make, oh, how do you make it? The alumite. Molten alumite. Let's see, is that, this is the one. Okay, so in order to get that, you need molten obsidian, molten iron, and then molten aluminum. So I don't quite have the stuff for that just yet, but that's fine. It's not like we really need it. Um, we'll just start with the iron. Okay, so let's put, uh, we'll put as much as we can in here. Now one cool thing is, let's say you want to smelt more than nine things at a time. In order to do that, all you need to do is just build this thing up. So if it has another layer of bricks or the seared windows or whatever, I mean, as long as it's part of the whole smeltery system, you can build it up here. And once you have like a new layer, for instance, oh shoot, I gotta, <laughs> I gotta do something about that. Once you have a new layer built up, you'll be able to have an additional nine for each layer you have there. So that's pretty cool actually. Now this is gonna get 18 ingots worth which is exciting, very good. But I'm gonna to wanna to switch back to the casting table here. And we're going to wanna put our casts there. So let's put this pickaxe head cast. And are we done yet? Nope, still have a little bit to go. So we're gonna put that there to get us the iron pickaxe head. And we're going to put the tool binding cast and the tool rod cast afterwards to get us an iron binding and an iron thing. Now, actually, we don't need to have all of those. I think we could use, say, a stone binding or a paper binding because you can, um, you can actually, you get slots to kind of upgrade things, which is neat. I guess since I don't need any of that stone stuff anymore, let me show you how it works. Oops. Let me show you how it works over here. Okay, so... We make a pickaxe, take a stone rod, stone binding, and that. And you can even give it a name, tool. Let's call it the stone breaker. Ta-da! And now we have the stone breaker. Now, we can also go back to the tool station, put that there, and then upgrade it with various materials. Um, I don't really know what. You could repair it if you put materials here, which is good if it becomes damaged or something. Um, let me see, what other kind of materials? If you have lapis, you can get fortune on it. In fact, actually, let's just take a look at this here. After all of this, you can find the different upgrades for it. So, for instance, diamond adds 500 extra durability for one diamond, so that's not too shabby, actually. It's a good compromise. And the mining level is increased to level 3, which I don't remember what it lets you cut through three let's see I, oh actually three i guess that would let you cut through obsidian hmm, not too bad actually it gives you a cheap diamond pickaxe you can put an emerald on it and that gives it more durability stuff like that you can give redstone on it and that increases the speed of the tool moss is nice that actually lets it auto repair itself when you add moss onto it. And it can stack, so you can add a lot more. This is really nice. If you get a lava crystal, which is hard to get, it actually will auto-smelt the blocks that you're, uh, you're using. Or it sets the mobs on fire and stuff, so that's pretty nice. And here's how you make some of that stuff. Yeah, not quite there for the lava crystal, but it is super useful. Luck, you just put some um, lapis on it, and then that gives it luck, which is very nice. Very nice indeed. Sharpness with quartz. Fiery if you have some blaze powder. Necrotic. This is interesting. If you have a wither skeleton bone, that's kind of cool. Silky. Oh, yeah. Gives you silk touch on stuff. You need to make uh, silky cloths and silky jewels. That's so kind of interesting. I mean, there's a lot here, which is really neat. Reinforced. Let's see. That's with the obsidian plate. 
knockback, beheading, oh my goodness. See, there's a whole ton of stuff here, which is neat. Electric's cool if you have something to charge up your electricity, because then you can recharge it instantly. And, um, yeah, you can also add other modifiers. So, I could go and grab a lapis block really quick, and that'll give me... I don't think it'll actually give me fortune right away. You have to get to a certain point before you can do that. Um, let's just make this right now. Okay, so we have that. Let's make the binding. Probably a waste, but it's really not that big of a deal. I have plenty of iron. Okay, so, tool rod. And we should have, I think, 16 iron left over, so we can just make ingots out of the rest of those. In fact, we're probably going to need those, aren't we? Yes, we are. So, let me get that ingot cast here, and I'm just going to drain away. We're going to need a total of... Oops, I think we're going to need... What is it, three? Oh, I already... Oh, that's right, we don't even need any of the ingots. Derp, because guess what? We actually built everything we need for that. So... Let's do this and put that there, that there, that there. And now we have, it's a shiny iron pick. There we go. So this thing, it has 324 durability, 6 mining speed. It can mine redstone. And it has 3 modifiers which you can put on it. Now those modifiers, like I got some moss for instance, that'll actually help this auto repair itself. So I'm going to go downstairs, and I'm going to get some moss and some, let's see, what else? I won't have access to the coolest of the cool things, but you can actually do a lot even with the basic stuff. So let's take this moss, and, oh, I think I have to, is it the moss I do things with, or is it mossy cobblestone? I don't remember. Yeah, you know what? Let me consult this again. I don't remember which one it was. Oh, I guess you just put moss on it. Cool. Okay, so yeah, if you have some moss, that's nice. You can find that growing in caves and places and things. Um, and then if you got some lapis, that's also neat. The cool thing with the lapis root is it actually... Oh, you know what? I could give it a diamond, and that gives me kind of a... Self-regenerating diamond pickaxe, which is pretty cool. Redstone would help it go faster, but that extra durability, it's kind of nice, actually. And this isn't the best pickaxe I'll ever make. I guarantee you of that. Oh, yeah. So what I was saying with the lapis and the fortune and stuff like that, right? So it does not work right away. It doesn't give you fortune until you put... Eh, it varies, but usually around... Um, usually around 50 lapis on it. And then it ups to fortune 1. But it does actually give a boost. See this lapis? It's 1 out of 450. You could put 450 lapis on it, and then it's like fortune 3, I think. Which is great. It might actually get there sooner than that. That's just the most lapis you can put on it. Um... So let's add luck to it, and let's go ahead and add some moss. Oops, can I put moss on it? Oh, I can't put this moss. It must be a different moss. That's so weird. What? Oh, well, I'll figure that one out. Um, so let's put a diamond there, and see, that actually increases the mining level and the durability. And then I can put other things on it. So now, you see, we have this really nice... Shiny iron pick that, um, well, it doesn't auto-regenerate, but I think I can repair it by just putting some iron on it. So to test that, let's just take this down, and then let's just see over here. See, I could put that there. 822 out of 824. Well, if I go into my backpack here, take out some iron... I can use one of these, and that'll repair it fully. And actually, it repairs it quite a bit, so that's pretty good. So yeah, this is Tinker's Construct. It's pretty fun. This is just some basic stuff. As I advance through the game, there's even more I can do. But I think this is a great spot to 
while both start <laughs> on the new server and to stop this episode. So I will see you on the next episode of Maryland's Hermit Craft Feed the Beast Unleashed Adventure. See you next time, ducks.